And I want to remind you, Pluto's planet 9, Eris is planet 10, so planet 9 is planet 11, and this is planet 12. Okay? That's Thor News numerical arrangement. And you can't disprove something that you never found, right? Warning. This video finds me Thor of Thor News in a wild and wacky mood, so I might be acting a little weird. I don't know if you can handle that. Sweet. You've been warned. Party dance time. And action! Hit the button, baby. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. The solar system possesses an additional ninth planet. To what? Where? Why, uh, what? Come on, man, out with it. We haven't got all day to waste. There's a real planet out there still to be found. This is the most fantastic story I've ever heard. Okay, cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Deal with it. Wait. <laughs> you start to see pictures, ain't you? There's something out there. Warning. This video finds me Thor of Thor News in a wild and wacky mood. So, I might be acting a little weird. I don't know if you can handle that. Sweet. You've been warned. What was I thinking about? Oh yeah, they found a new planet, man. Yep. Forget Planet Nine. Wait, what? There's evidence of a tenth planet lurking at the edge of our solar system. Oh, oh I guess NASA didn't find it, because NASA talking about all their exoplanets they found seven trillion light years away. They're like, hey, let's get really excited about a bunch of cool new planets that we'll never be able to get to in our life, unless Stargates are real. Anyway, let's find out more about this fascinating story, because I hadn't had a space story light my fire in a while. Not counting the wallops sounding rocket in the Send Baby NASA Parker mission thingy, which I will cover. Boom. I just clicked it. All right. Yeah. Can't stop it now. It's been clicked. We're at Newsweek. What is needed for life on another planet? Why are you even asking that question? Are you saying there's life on this planet? Newsweek? What the hell is that guy doing? Oh my God. That, what the? Forget Planet Nine. No. I can never forget Planet Nine. Ever. Not much. I can't. There's evidence. Of a tenth planet lurking at the edge of our solar system. Oh my god, that is so exciting. I just got science juices all over myself. That's disgusting and I don't even know what it means. A Mars-sized planet appears to be lurking at the edge of our solar system. And you know what that means, don't you? It's tiny. Yep, Napoleon-sized. You know what I'm saying? Because that probably means it's angry and, and wants to fight a war all the time. A Mars-sized planet. What the hell? Jesus Christ, these websites are so crappy. Like, what type of website do you have where it just randomly places the thing right over the word you're trying to read? What are you doing? I'm gonna re- Alright. Craphead. Stupid Newsweek. What the hell? Oh well, my hackers must be pissed again. They're so sensitive. <laughs> hackers are sensitive, that is for sure. <laughs> oh man. Like, if you ever sit there and are like, man, I wish a large group of infosec girls had a massive crush on me and were obsessive. I'd say rethink that wish, buddy. You know what I'm saying? All right, what am I talking about? Yeah. The planetary mass object seems to be disrupting the orbits of other smaller rocky bodies within the Kuiper Belt, a disc-shaped region of icy bodies beyond Neptune that encircles the whole solar system and extends around 2.3 billion miles. Oh my God, this is so fascinating. This planetary mass object is different from the hypothetical planet 9. Thanks for clearing that up. Cause that thing's supposed to be huge and on a crash course with Earth. I made that up to make this video more exciting. Oh no, no, my scientific credibility is out the window. A huge object, that's what she said, believed to be orbiting the sun from the outer solar system. Evidence for this planet was announced in 2016 when scientists from Caltech, California found several objects with highly unusual orbits. And those scientists were Constantin Bettigan, and I forget the other guy's name. I, I just, I can't remember it for some reason. These orbits could, however, be explained by the existence of a giant planet with a mass about 10 times that of Earth. Dun dun dun. You see, celestial objects are drawn into the orbits of larger bodies. But if that was true, how come Earth isn't pulling in all these asteroids? You know all the asteroids that fly by Earth? How come Earth's gravity does not suck them in? You know, that's how I get caught in all relationships. How come it doesn't do it to Earth? 
asteroids. Hold on a second. I'm going to hit myself on the head with the microphone a couple times. All right. I'm trying to mature and science it up a bit more. I think I'm a little off the rails. All the planets in the solar system orbit the sun and the moon orbits Earth. Well, thanks, Newsweek. That is fascinating information. So when astronomers find bodies that are not orbiting in the way they should be, it suggests something else is influencing them. I guess it would be drugs. Oh, man. wonder how high celestial drugs could get you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why don't they invent a legal drug that'll make you feel good? So in those days, you're like, holy crap, life is dragging me down. Hard to deal with. So I'm going to take some feel-good drugs that's totally legal. It's almost like they made drugs that would make you feel good, and then they illegalized them. It's a big scam. And then they'd go out and like make for-profit prisons to complete the circle on that giant societal scam of feeling good and criminalization. In a study, Submi, you know, whatever, Newsweek, your web designer sucks. Flat Earth balls donkey. I don't even know what that means, and that's not an insult to Flat Earthers. It just sounds funny when I say it. A team of scientists presented evidence of a planetary body sitting on the edges of the Kuiper Belt. Uh, did any of that evidence happen to include a photograph, Cat Volk, and Renu Malhotra from the University of Arizona analyzed the tilt angles and orbits of over 600 Kuiper Belt objects? Wow, did humans do it? You'd think they'd have an app for that. All right, this is what Planet Tan is supposed to look like. You might be like, hey, they have a lot of blue on it. I'd like, you're right, they do. You might be like, that means water. I mean, nah, because I found this thingy. It's like Mars. It shows you Mars every day. It makes it look like Mars is blue. Where is that stupid thing? I should go back. Huh? So, look, here's the Martian weather report. And you can even get it to spin. See, Mars is blue. It's the weather they're seeing. That's from April, but... Look, Mars looks pretty blue. So, you can either have a conspiracy theory that, like... They're lying to us about Mars. Dun, dun, dun. Or, it just looks blue. Let's go back to our fantastic article. What is that? What did, why do you stick the crap in my... I can't... How am I supposed to read an article, man? There you go. They discovered the most distant KBOs is tilted away. It should be are tilted away. From the orbital plane, it should be sitting on. Meaning something in this region is warping their orbits. Imagine you have lots and lots of fast spinning tops. And you give each one a slight nudge. Malhotra said in a statement. If you then take a snapshot of them, you will find their spin axes, axes, or axes, will be different orientations. <sighs> Wait, if we're talking about sexual orientations of these Kuiper Belt objects, then that totally changes the definition of fast spinning tops. <laughs> oh my god, did I make that joke? I did! Two points for me, negative five points for me. But on average, they will be pointing at, to the local gravitational field of Earth. They found that for the KBOs, they were farther out than 50 astronomical units. The average plane warps away from the one they should be on. Okay, so we have found a new planet in our solar system. In our calculators again. And I want to remind you, Pluto's planet 9, Eris is planet 10, so planet 9 is planet 11, and this is planet 12. Okay? There's Thor News numerical arrangement. You can disagree with it if you want. And then you can down thumbs me. And every time he down thumbs me, I start to cry tears out of my eyeballs. And I start to bleed out of my butt. So if you are a hater, hit that down thumbs button. And make me release bodily fluids in multiple ways. The most likely explanation for our results is that there is some unseen mass. <sighs> There's a joke there, but I think I've made too many inappropriate jokes already. Lead author Volk said, According to our calculations, something as massive as Mars would be needed to cause the warp that we measured. Oh, so it might even be bigger or more massive. Because mass is not weight, dumbass. <sighs> Volk and Malhotra calculate the Mars-sized object would sit around 60 AU. And you know what? If we had replaced the Hubble, what is that, 1995 telescope? We might be able to see this thing easy as pie. We might have found Planet 9 easy as pie. But no, you know, like 25 years later, we still haven't replaced the Hubble. They're like, hey, don't worry, the James Webb Space Telescope is coming next year. I'm like, okay, 
you know, I guess, whatever. The observed distant KBOs are concentrated in a ring about 30 astronomical units wide and would feel the gravity of such a planetary mass object over time. So hypothesizing one planetary mass to cause the observed warp is not unreasonable across the distance. Another explanation for the weird KBO's orbits would be, these scientists were like, hey, if Mike Brown find a planet in his calculator and get super famous and get organizations like Newsweek to be talking about it, maybe we can find a planet in our calculator, you know? And you can't disprove something that you never found, right? You can keep hypothesizing on it for days, months, years. Wait, that's not what that says. Another explanation for the weird KBO orbits could be that a star traveling past our solar system at some point in the past knocked them out of alignment. Oh, was it a neutron star? Once the star is gone, all the KBOs will go back to, to processing around their previous plane. That would have required an extremely close passage of about 100 AU, and the warp would be erased within 10 million years, so we don't consider this a likely scenario. I was wondering, how come they don't show us the stars around us going around uh, a Sagittarius A? galaxy that we were supposed to go around or the you know I'd like to see all the stars in motion even in a computer generated system show us how they work but they never do that they said the launch of the large synoptic survey telescope a new telescope that will survey the sky should help identify the planet if it exists wonderful commenting on the study Andrew Coates professor of physics and deputy director of the solar system well wow, that's a title at UCL's Mullard Space Science Laboratory UK tells Newsweek the jury is still out when it comes to working out what is causing the weird behavior of KBOs. Early last year, the alignment of the orbits of six objects behaving oddly was linked with a possible but yet unseen object called Planet 9, about 10 times the size of Earth. The suggestion was that it is orbiting between 200 and 1200 to 2000 astronomical units in the Kuiper Belt, he says. In the middle of the year, last year, computer models Computer modeling suggested that, as its orbit is much further from the Sun than us, such an object could be a captured exoplanet from another star in the Milky Way some 4.5 billion years ago. Or it may be an ejected forming planetary core from our own solar system. The new paper suggests, based on a measured, statistically significant warping of the solar system's plane, that this could instead be consistent with a Mars or Earth-sized object at a much closer distance. Well, so now it's grown to Earth-sized. Fascinating. In all cases, what we really need is observations of any object to back it up. The hunt is on for not one planet, but now two, with several existing and planned spacecraft and telescopes on the way. whoop de doo Michelle Bannister, an astrophysicist research center at Queen's University, Belfast, UK, tells Newsweek the possibility of Planet 10 is entirely reasonable. You expect objects like this to form in the initial growth of tiny planets. Whatever. Most of the planets stayed really tiny, whatever, so they call them planetesimals. Maybe they have tiny people and tiny animals growing on them. You don't know. And they became the KBOs, but some of them got bigger. All right. Most of them have to be scattered and lost from the solar system. But we know a few of them remaining. Pluto, for example. It's entirely reasonable you would have a Mars-sized object at some point. The question is, why would we not have found it yet? That's a great question. Bannister says, Planet 10 could be located in one of the only areas of the sky that could hide any large object, a region covered by the Milky Way. Hmm. At that point, it becomes a lot harder to find distant moving objects because there's just so many stars. It's a region of the sky where you could potentially hide an object. Wait, who's planet hiding? It's possible, it's quite plausible, and the fact that there's this twist in the orbit of the KBOs, it's really suggestive. Kind of like a lot of the jokes in this video, baby. All right, great. We got Planet 12 now. Fantastic. God bless everyone. Stay tuned for the next wild and crazy Thor News astronomical adventure. Hopefully the weather will let me do a few. You never know. Ladies and gentlemen, this Planet X story is crazier than I am.